Welcome to the Ask Feliskini podcast with a guest. I am proud to present Jamshed Durani from England. Jamshed is certified life coach, transformation coach, peak performance coach, NLP practitioner, author, and also hypnotherapist. Jamshed, please tell us more about yourself. What is your story? <laughs> well, thank you for having me on your show today, Peter. Um, well, you've pretty much already summed up everything that I do. Um, all I can add is um, I actually got into the coaching line as, as, a, as a corporate trainer because training is something I would always enjoy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to do training because I'm a people's person. I enjoy that interaction with, with, with people. So as a trainer, I was actually one day surfing the internet and I came across uh, Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. And that is what opened my eyes to this whole new field of life coaching. And, and, and it, it really triggered my interest, which is what got me into this. And I've been doing this for a few years now. Um, I've been working with uh, clients globally. Um, however, I am based myself in uh, Edinburgh in Scotland, huh? which is, of course, in the United Kingdom. Um, so, yeah. Uh, okay. Let me ask you. So how much does the training that you did on your uh, corporate job differs from the coaching that you're doing today? What is the main difference? Oh, it's absolutely different. Absolutely different. Corporate training is, see, it depends. Now, I used to do corporate training for various subjects. Um, if I talk about corporate training that I used to do for management and leadership, yes, that and something that's got to do with peak performance coaching, is not too different. It's quite it's quite similar. I won't say it's hundred percent the same thing, but it is quite similar. Okay. But if you talk about training for security or training for um, conflict management or training for first aid, that's completely different from life coaching. Okay. What what do you enjoy more? Because uh, you have so so many different uh, coaching that you do, for example, life coaching, transformational coaching, uh, peak performance. Uh, are are these are these just are all these just methods to help people be more successful, or do you dif differentiate uh, the the course or the um, uh, which method you use on uh, different clients, or how how do you go about? It? So my main niche is actually peak performance. Mm -hmm. um, I did most of the, the coaching training. Um, I'm also a, a, a law of attraction coach. But again, I, I do this because I quite enjoy the learning process. Because I feel when, when I am doing a, a, a peak performance coaching with somebody, I can use valuable points from these other methods that I can integrate into my peak performance coaching. Okay. Who's your ideal client for the peak performance coaching? <laughs> CEOs, managers, entrepreneurs, business owners. These are my main clients. Okay. Um, where do you think you could be most successful? Where where do you add the most value? What what, what kind of person comes and you said, okay, uh, you're you're uh, something that I can really work on. And uh, what what would be the client that would be like um, that you wish for and that you can really show the results? Uh, let's say in a, in a year or or really fast. See, normally my courses are between ten to twelve weeks. And that said, I do just one class a week, mm -hmm. which is for usually for about an hour, maximum an hour and a half, depending on the client need. 
sometimes of course if it's a corporate package i a lot of people say no i'm not going to wait 10 weeks i want the course done within five days or within 10 days or within two weeks so then accordingly i cater to them um what kind of people do i enjoy working with to be honest personal preference i i like working with people who lack confidence okay and you help them achieve this uh absolutely confident state absolutely are you also i enjoy working with all of all kinds of people but a personal preference that i really enjoy is people who lack confidence are you also accountability partner or uh, are you just a coach no with my clients i am an accountability partner absolutely okay how important is uh to reach this accountability with your clients in order for them to make a progress see to be honest i feel it doesn't necessarily have to be me as the accountability partner for my client it could be anybody it could be their spouse it could be their their best friend it could be their girlfriends it, their partners anybody if somebody wants me to be their accountability partner yes then i become their accountability partner however having an accountability partner is extremely important because a lot of times when you when you don't have an accountability partner you you tend to you know slack off and and derail again from the path that you're on but if you know that end of the day you have somebody to answer to you tend to be more focused and more on track okay uh you're also a hypnotherapist and i would like to know how do you how do you apply these methods and how do you see hypnotherapy in correlation with uh, neuro linguistic programming that you also practice well to be honest they're quite integrated and if you are an, an nlp um, practitioner hypnotherapy actually becomes a lot more easier to understand okay um of course i only use uh, hypnotherapy therapy for breaking habits habits that people find hard to um uh, hard to let go of but it's something i honestly it is something that i've recently started i haven't been doing that for too long okay w would you say that uh um neuro linguistic programming is more structured and it's uh, more a science and hypnotherapy is is more um let's say a, a lot of intuition involved uh, a, a lot of uh, trigger searching and similar um to some extent yes but again it's it's person specific mm -hmm. it, it it's really depending on what the client is looking for because sometimes sometimes i might be treating a client and i might feel like approaching through an, an nlp point of view is easier and quicker for me sometimes like you said sometimes i might be looking for that trigger point for that person okay would you agree that uh, for practicing uh, nlp you don't need the consent of a client but for, for practicing hypnotherapy you need a consent <laughs> well we we i i have a tendency of taking consent either way okay so whether But, it's nlp or whether it's hypnotherapy we always take consent before we start anything okay so that is important for you because uh, nlp is often used also to analyze clients and uh, there's often no need for consent because you just need it as a method of uh, analytics or part of the analytics or how you gather data that is why i imply that you don't need uh, consent but with hypnotherapy uh, you you need the them them so the client to be involved that is the uh absolutely the, the... but then like i said whether it whether it's nlp whether it's hypnotherapy or whether it's just peak performance uh, coaching anything that we do with the client before we begin we always take the consent for everything So you explain that the whole methodology that you will use all the approaches and everything and then you start. Absolutely. 
Okay. And uh, how hard is to have a group sessions for NLP and hypnotherapy? Again, this is person specific. If I feel like, okay, I need more time to invest in, in, in a particular person, then of course I always give them an extra time out of the group. Mm -hmm. um, but again, so far I've never come across such a situation where I had to do that. But of course, if I need to, I will always give them that extra time. Okay, Let, let's get back to life coaching and peak performance coach. Sure. And most of my listeners are interested in what can they expect from a life coach? What, what, how, will their, how will their life be different? What will they have to do in order to improve? So if I put it in simple terms, a life coach helps you take your life from where it is at the moment to where it is that you want to be. Okay. So whatever your goals are, provided they are achievable, measurable, and realistic. Okay. A life coach will help you reach those goals within a specified time frame. But uh, what are the... What do the clients need to uh, give up in order to, 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 to reach these goals? What, what is the, the most uh, common thing that they will have to give up in order to, to reach the, the, their life goals? See, a lot of people, to be honest, when they start, like, for example, you ask them, oh, what is your goal in life? To make money. That's the most common answer you will get. Make money. Okay. How do you plan to make that money? Don't know. Just because you're saying that your goal is to make money, that's not really your goal because it's not measurable. It is not in a time frame. Okay, it may be realistic, but then again, it's it's vague. It's not complete. So it's 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 idea. It's not a goal yet. Exactly. Or or even a wish, not even an idea. Absolutely, it's more more like a wish. Um, again, the most common thing I'll get is having the knowledge of what a goal is. Apart from this, this I won't say there's anything too common because again, every individual is different. Mm -hmm. And every individual might have certain aspects in their life which is personal to them that may be needing. But yeah, the most common thing I would say is the goal setting. Okay. When would you recommend... Uh, your client to go and uh, attend a therapy instead of a coaching session? What, what what would be the trigger for you to do that? That would depend. See, we, before we actually start a session with a client, we actually do a discovery, uh, a complimentary discovery call where we see if we are fit to work with this individual or not. Mm -hmm. So an individual who's going through a lot of trauma or depression based on like how deep that trauma or that depression or, or that any psychological impact that that person might be going through is, we would suggest they go to some, some therapists before they come to a life coach. Okay. Uh, how would you go about the peak performance? What, what, what do you think that how, if, if we go into measurable goals and let's say that the, a lot of people would like to achieve uh, money. How much more money they can make after a session with you? Well, that depends on what their goal is. Like I said, as life coach, I can help them achieve their goals. Now, whatever their goal is, I cannot put a specific amount and say that, oh, they can get a billion dollars. No, they might even be able to get a trillion dollars depending on what their goal is. Okay, but let, let's say that an average person that is now making 100K, how much more can the average person make if it decides for a course with you? Will that be a 200K, 300K? What would be realistic to expect? It could be anything. Again, I do not work on making you rich. Right? I don't help you make money. You help yourself make money. Okay. So if you're a peak performer and you've achieved peak performance after my course, 
if you were making 100K, chances are you can probably make that twice the amount, maybe make 300K because you have got more time now yeah, I'm just trying to make it more tangible for our listeners because the listeners, um, the peak performance is so, some kind of uh, uh, abstract term for most of our listeners. And how how can we make it more tangible for them? So let's see, if someone goes and 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 will enroll in one of your courses, what can they expect of it? What tangible is there? What will change for them? Okay. First of all, let's start with what exactly is peak performance? Okay. So peak performance is where an organization or an individual is, is working, their output is at their peak. Okay. They cannot work much quicker, better, faster than that peak. That peak is the limit. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, a lot of people get confused with peak performance and high performance as well, but there's a difference. High performance is where your, your output, your performance is high, but it's still not the peak. Okay. It's just below the peak. The difference between high performance and peak performance, you can say is peak performance is not long lasting. It does stop. Okay. Whereas high performance, you can always be performing high. Okay, but how can we make it tangible? How can person or company uh, calculate this peak performance? Is there any mathematical formula? How, how do you estimate that? Where are the bottlenecks? What, what, what are the problems uh, on the way to achieving a, a peak performance? There is actually a formula, but however, I don't, I don't uh, recall it right now, but it is a long formula where you can assess your peak performance. Anyway, coming back to a more simplistic term, when peak performance, so let me, let me just think about what is the most simplest way I could explain this then. So when you are a peak performer, your, so, Say, for example, if you if you are doing an eight hour day shift. As a peak performer, what you're completing in that eight hours, you're probably finishing that in four hours. If not less. OK. So your eight hour day comes down to. Four hours plus your work, the job that you're doing is also of higher quality because you're more focused. Okay. So when, you're, when your output becomes half of what it used to be, and, and you're, you're finishing your day in, in less time and achieving more, your production or your, your, your revenue will increase because what you were doing in one, in one day or in two days, you can now complete in maybe one day. Okay. So that increases your revenue. But is, is that ap applicable only to entrepreneurs that are their own boss? Or is that applicable also to companies? Because in companies, they're, they're, they have a rigid structure and this eight hours uh, a day is really rigid. They don't, they, they don't want you to work half time. They don't want you to work just uh, finish on a project. They will give you new project to amass for the same uh, amount of payment. How, 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 how do you go about peak performance in a, in a company if you are an employee and not an entrepreneur or owner of the, the business? Okay, again, it's quite simple. When you finish, when you're, what you were doing in taking you eight hours to complete, you're now completing in four hours, which means what you were completing in two days, you're now completing in one day. Okay. So even as an organization, your your productivity has increased by double. Although I say after my course, your productivity should go up at least five times. Okay. So if for the sake of argument, we say it's doubled up. So even as an organization, your productivity, your output has doubled up. So when everything has doubled up, what does that imply? That your revenue should double up as well. Okay, but but that is for entrepreneurs because because if, if no, you're no, on no, employment no. contract, it's, no, no, 
There's it's also for organizations. Okay. So let's say, let's say you have a team that's manufacturing or producing something. Yes. Yeah. They went through the peak performance training. Their productivity has increased. So the time that they were going, they were taking, say, to complete one task was, say, for the sake of argument, let's say they were taking four hours to complete one task. After the training, they're probably taking one hour or maybe two hours to complete the same task. Okay. Are, are, are you talking about the soft skills or are you also uh, helping them organize them, th themselves? Both. So it's, it's, a, it's a mix. It, it's a mix. Uh, motivation plus organization. Absolutely. Because see, the way I train, I, I, I start my, my, my course, I've actually divided it into uh, nine parts. The okay. first part is, of course, just an explanation of what exactly the peak performance system is. Mm -hmm. The second part, or what I usually start from, is to create a, a personal compass for the individual or the organization. This I refer to this compass as the North Star, because that is your guidance. That is your guiding light. Once we get the sense of direction ready, then we work, work with the mindset management. And that is one of the most crucial parts because your mindset is the most important thing. Okay. So once your mindset is where we want it to be, then we go to the mental toughness management to make you tough. You want you to be tough. You want you to be confident. Mm -hmm. Then we make a simple goal setting system where we actually tell you that what exactly is a goal and how do you achieve that goal? We plan through that. Then we come to a proper unshakable confidence building measures where we really build your confidence to that nothing is impossible for you. And then we come to your laser-like focus where we deal with your focus. So if, if you're doing something, but you're not focused, do you think you'll be doing a quality job? Absolutely not. So once you're focused in what you're doing, you won't even realize you've started. You won't even realize what the time it is, what time it is, and whether if you're hungry or not, because you're so engrossed in what you're doing. And lastly, we're going to do is a visualization. So after we have done all the steps and we bring you to the last step, which is visualization, is this is where we tell you now, imagine yourself after you've done all these steps, where do you see yourself now? And that's the end of my course. Of course, a lot of time people can finish this whole thing within eight weeks. I usually give a time frame of 10 to 12 weeks. 10 is usually my average. Sometimes if somebody needs more, we go to the 11th or the 12th week. Okay, very, very nice. Thank you for all these insights. Are there any more industry insights or uh, tricks of the trade that you can share with our listeners? Tricks of the trades. Well, everyone works differently. A lot of people who, who are actually peak performance coaches, they'll tell you, oh, forget nine steps. I'll, I'll make you a peak performance in six steps. Yes, absolutely. They're right. You can become peak performance, peak performer in, in even five steps. Okay. I like to keep it nine because I like to break it down so a person understands and really knows what exactly it is they're doing. Because like I said, you might reach a point where you might derail from the track. So it'll be easier for you to come back on track because you'll remember, I've made it so simple that you'll remember exactly what to do. Thank you. Uh, where, where is the best place that people can reach you? Um, they can reach me on Facebook, Instagram, my website. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll include all the links uh, in the description below. Uh, sure. Thank you, uh, Damshit, for uh, this wonderful interview and for being my guest.
Thank you so much, Peter, for having me on today. It was an absolute pleasure.